Greetings and welcome to our Saudi gathering call tonight. Um, it's very similar to the spirit gathering calls we've been having. Um, it's not on the normal third Tuesday, and uh, we called this one um, to have a time to uh, for for Diane and I to talk um, and for us all to talk about Saudi and uh, what's next with Saudi. Uh, today is August. 25th, 2015. Um, so glad you've joined us all. Um, we're recording this call so that the people who uh, can't be here tonight can listen in. And um, to keep the line quiet, quiet, um, please mute your line uh, using your own phone's mute button or the star six. Um, we're going to uh, be having a, a circle um, with time for sharing from everybody. Um, we were decided to do that in a kind of structured way just so that everybody would have space and we'll give more details about that as we go. Um, it's going to be similar to a talking stick kind of circle. Um, and that's, you know, one person speaks at a time and uh, when that one person's done, uh, another person can, can jump in. Um, another important feature of the of the circle is pause, is taking space and taking time to reflect and, uh, you know, to let energy move and to let spirit speak in us and through us. Um, it can be used as a, a resource to reflect on what's unfolding uh, in us and with us in the moment. Um, and so um, I'm curious if anybody would like to act as guardian uh, for the circle, and the guardian listens for that need for a pause and, and holds space for the, the flow of the circle, um, and that guardian can call for a pause at any time um, if they feel the need for one, and they can also, um, if somebody else calls for a pause, hi there, who's joined us? I think that was maybe just somebody jumping back on who fell, who fell off. Um, so if somebody else calls for a pause, because anybody can call for a pause, the guardian can um, can help that pause happen, uh, ring a chime, um, we take three breaths, and then the guardian, the person who asked for the pause, can then say why they asked for it, and, um, and then we can go back to the circle. Is there anybody who'd like to, would be willing to serve as guardian tonight? I can do that. This is Diane. Okay. Yeah, thanks so much, Diane. Okay. So now let's let's set this space for our circle. Let's take a moment to get settled, to center ourselves, and to let the events of the day begin to move out of the front of our awareness and begin to enter deeper sacred space however we know that space and however you uh, begin to access that space. You can do it by focusing on your breath and your body. And I'd like us to draw our attention to our hearts. Just feel your heart center. Good. And then to the hara, which is the space in the middle of the body, about three, two, three finger widths below the navel, where the heart center is often thought of as, as sort of the center of emotion. The hara is often thought of as a more physical center, just noticing the energy in that place. And then the head center in the middle of the head. And then back to the heart center, holding the awareness of all three centers at the same time from the heart center.
great. And now let us imagine that we're joining together on the heart centers, from sacred heart to sacred heart, with every person on the call. And really for this call, I'd like to include in the circle all of the clergy of Saudi, past, present, and future. You can imagine joining together in a circle with a light or flame in the center of our circle. Imagine there being a flame and we are all around that circle. And let the light coming from our heart centers go out and touch that flame in the center like spokes of a wheel going into the hub. Now we're connected sacred heart to sacred heart. And I want to invite us to set intention for this circle. And say these thoughts to yourself or something that holds the same space and energy for you. We listen to one another with compassion and curiosity. We ask for what we need and offer what we can. We deepen our connection with one another and the divine. May this sharing serve, may it serve us, our communities, and the planet. So it is. Great. Great. So, hmm, what we wanted to do tonight is um, have a time to to check in and share about where we are as as a church, where Saudi is. Um, in June, um, former residing bishop Amy Skeezes stepped down. Um, as residing bishop and um, being in the uh, place of co-bishop. Um, the bylaws elevated me then to bishop and after meditating on it for a while, uh, my guidance said, say yes, do it, you know, be in that spot. And, um, you know, I don't know for how long that will be. Um, you know, I hope to follow my guidance about that too and you know, there may come a time at some point. I mean, I'm sure there will come a time, you know, like I'm, I won't be in this seat forever. But how long, you know, like when my guidance lets me know that it's time to pass it on or time for me to step out of it, you know, then then that can happen. Um, but for the moment, you know, I'm getting the sense to be in it. Um, a little bit about my connection to Zadi. Uh, I've always had, you know, I think like a lot of us, you know, we all have uh, a sense of spirit and, and the spiritual, you know, and, and that's certainly true for me um, in my life. And um, it's it's led me to study energy work and exploration of consciousness stuff. And uh, at one point in my life, I was moving across the country. I moved from Minnesota to San Francisco. And at that point, I was like, well, what do I want this move to be about? And one of the things my intuition told me was was to become a priest. And um, I sort of like that word priest um, because it, it, it seems to, like I think of priests often as being uh, more contemplative and minister often to me means engaged in the community, you know, and, and you know, our, our official title here in Saudi is minister, but I've always had a resonance with that word priest as well. And so I, um, I got ordained. I found a program when I moved to San Francisco. Um, a, a very wonderful woman was, who was part of the Universal Church of the Master was running an ordination program. And so I, I joined that and got ordained. And 
and in the meantime, I, I started studying um, exploration of consciousness, the energy work stuff with, um, with Amy Skeezes. And when she started talking about her vision of opening university of energy work and light work, I was really drawn to do that. And she set that up as the light center of body and wanted all of us who were training as mentors in the university to get ordained in body. Um, and so I let go of my UCM ordination and was ordained in body. And uh, and then when um, when Amy was uh, was asked to be and said yes to being bishop. Um, she asked me to be co-bishop with her, and that resonated with me as uh, a chance to contribute and support. Um, I was very much wanting to support the the, um, the work that we were wanting to do through Gowden, and um, and also uh, you know to support Amy and um, and uh, you know I've always I like this vision of. You know, to me, one of the things that Saudi has represented was a vehicle for um, people's ministry to be empowered. You know, like the like the First Corinthians verse: there are all these ways to serve spirit. There are all these ways to um, to be, you know, to be doing spirit's work in the world, and um, and to have a body that's supporting people in doing that. You know, that's that's like that feels like a really great thing for me to support doing. You know, and that's, that's a lot of why I said yes to becoming the bishop, I mean, to, being, to becoming co-bishop, and I think that's still resonant and true now. Um, it seems to me like there's, you know, some of the history of the church is, um, well, actually, before I, let me, let me just take a pause for a moment. Yeah, that's what it feels like. The, the, some of the history of the church, you know, is that when it started with um, Amy Keys and Dorothy Blackmere, they had, you know, Amy had a really strong connection. She had a really strong vision about what she wanted to teach and what she wanted to create. And um, uh, I think that, that it seems like after that, like um, when, when I was ordained, it, there wasn't that clear focus at the center of the church of what the church was teaching and what it was doing. And I think uh, during um, uh, Amy Skeez's time as bishop, she did a lot, and I supported, we did a lot to recreate a center um, for the church. And it seems like that work is, is what's ahead of us. It's like, well, how, how does this become a vibrant body, you know, rather than, rather than just a place and, and there may be there may be some people who want to just just be a place where they become ordained, you know, and, and that just allows them to do their ministry. But it seems to me like uh, it seems to me like there's so much more available by creating um, more interaction between the clergy, um, more things that we're doing together, like having a sense of community that then begins to attract more people to what we're doing so that the vehicle can survive. You know, it can certainly survive for a few years with those of us who are in the church continuing, but at a certain point, the dues that come in won't be enough to meet the administrative costs and it won't be able to continue. So, so how we enliven the center, how we create those connections um, is up to us to co-create. And um, I feel like I'm really going to, you know, like I, I have some ideas about that, but I really want to co-create that. I really want that to be something we do as a, a church um, or we do as a group. Um, yeah, I'm going to ask, uh, who's come on the call? A couple of people have joined. Hi, this is Joanna. Hi, Joanna. Welcome. Hi. And one other person? And yes, this is Gwen. Hey, Gwen. Nice to hear your voice. Welcome. Hey, that's all. <laughs> okay. Um, if you guys would be so kind as to mute um, uh, until you're until you want to share, that would be really lovely to keep the background noise down. So, 
Yes. Remind me what the mute is, please. Oh, it's star six. Thank you. So I just talked for a long while, probably longer than I really wanted to, but um, I wanted to say that in, in sort of like framing and context. Um, and um, uh, I'll ask Diane, is there anything you want to share about uh, framing our call tonight? Diane, are you with us? Yes, I'm sorry. Um, I was on mute myself and um, was just hearing still some background noise, but I think it's gone now. Um, I love the – hello? We're here. Okay. Hello. Um, I really love the Tazadi vision that um, Amy Skeezus wrote for Tazadi that is on the Tazadi site, which is that it – Tazadi welcomes and supports people in, an, in experiencing the infinite, loving, co-creative presence of the divine. Um, my experience um, is that I have been studying with Amy at Roselite for 20 plus years and um, did, uh, came into the Gowden University as healer, did the healer did the Healer Counselor Program and also the Minister Program and found those to be so enriching for the additional experience of that infinite loving co-creative presence of the divine. And I'm finding more and more of that um, presence in my daily life, I think, as my awareness increases. And I see the beauty and the possibility and potential in that connection and also in that connection with other people, finding that connection with other people and also um, looking forward to finding how and where that connection is with, the, with Tazadi as an organization. Um, in the last call when that Amy hosted um, where uh, she explained um, her retirement and stepping down as bishop, I had mentioned that um, what I'm really seeking is, is this connection, like really what is Tazadi and the light centers and, and how do we all come together, like what's the purpose of this and all of us together. And I'm still with that question and um, that exploration. So I think that's all that I have to share this evening. Thank you. This is Sue, and um, I really appreciated, uh, first of all, Topsoil uh, and Diane, your um, telling us how you came to study, and, and those are things, your stories are something I've never heard. And I think those stories are important. I think everybody's stories are important, and I appreciated hearing them. Um, what prompted my my picking up the walking or talking stick, not walking stick, talking stick, um, is it? You know, I connected to to, to Daddy through the founder Amy Keys, and what I can say about her story is that this 
organization came through her. It wasn't her vision. It wasn't something she conceived. It was something that was given to her from the ethers, from higher orders. She had committed to serve God and as, you know, as a result of something else and that was what she was committed to and she did more than anybody I've ever met. She walked, as she said, between the two worlds. There was always part of her communing with spirit and higher orders and there was always a part of her walking the walking the earth and what she so a, a big a heritage a big part of this organization is getting is connecting with your into with our intuition each of us individually and i really enjoyed hearing that uh, hearing your story about that um top soil as well as yours diane i think from from my point of view and what I and my work with Amy Keys was her it was very much centered on connecting, making that connection to the divine. So here's here's what I'm saying is we're saying to ourselves, what is our vision? How can we uh support to Zaddy? How can we help make it more alive? Um I personally do not think that it was any accident that Amy Skeezes, who is an absolute, apparently, and from everything I've seen, an absolute master, and she said this early on, I am very good at creating containers. And boy, did she create a dynamic, vivid container for Tizati as it is today and to work, you know, in these times. So my question is this, as I ask myself, what do I want of Tizati, I try to connect in my meditations with the etheric Tizati, which is way bigger than just a church. And um, it isn't just a church or a church. It's bigger than that. So I, I would say also we need to include the organization, the living entity organization and that consciousness when we seek to understand where fatty can go and what we can do to help it. And that's all I have to say. Um, thank you. I'm letting you sit down. Yeah, thank you, Sue. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks for that. That adds more context than depth. I had muted my phone when Diane was speaking, and I was Speaking when you started to, and that made me realize that my phone was on mute. Um, <laughs> and um, what I was wanting to say then was I was wanting to invite us to um, to share, very much like how you did, Sue. Um, I would like to, you know, because there are so many people on the call, I'd like us to um, maybe share um, in in a sentence rather than um, with the whole story. Um, but um, but I think you, I think Sue, you really w- led the way in a nice way to talk about your connection with Saudi. Um, but I, I'm I'd like to open um, like maybe about ten minutes of space for people to chime in in sort of a popcorn way with um, things that are alive for you about your connection with Saudi. You know, a word, two words, maybe a sentence. Um, and uh, so I'll just open that space up, and if you feel moved to share something about your connection with body, um, please do. Our morning star, I'll pick up the stick. I've been a part of Tazadi for over 25 years now, and the entire time that I've been a part of it, it's been a very supportive, nurturing, growing, enlightening community, and it's always been an honor for me to be a part of it from the very beginning to 
today. And I'm really excited to see how many people have chimed in on this call because for me that is too another validation that we are a community and we are active and we are growing. I leave the stick down. This is Sally, and I've been involved with Tazadi for a number of years. I also have been studying with Amy Skeezes and came to a point where I felt that doing the Healer Counselor Program would be beneficial to me and to bringing my service into the world, and I actually was lucky to be able to work with Miriam Lamb before she um, basically passed away and was no longer acting as the bishop. Um, and I, I think one of the things I'm going to put out there, and this may be a little earlier than the way you scheduled, is that it's hard for me to feel the community of Tazadi, the way things are structured, and that for me, Tazadi is much more of a professional um, support system for me, and the code of ethics, the insurance, legalization, all of these factors that have been focused on have been really, really appreciate it. Um, but when I come to develop connection with the divine, I'm finding that I reach towards other sources. And so that is something that I hope can evolve more in the future. And I'm putting down the stick. a few more minutes for this question. Um, another way to ask this question is, why Saudi? Why why be in Saudi? You know, like we're all we're all paying our dues each year. Why why are we paying those dues? You know, what's our connection to Saudi? This is Sue again, and I'd like to pick up the stick one more time just briefly. Um, I pay my dues because of what it allows me to do and allows me to work legally. Also, the like I said, there's a connection to a bigger, broader um, 
entity out there that covers so much more. And also for the promise and the work that Amy Skeezus did, I agreed with Sally in that in the past, in the past seven years, there may be a lack in a way of that connection to spirit. I can, I can understand in a way what she's saying, but what I want to say is Amy was very, very busy trying to juggle that ball but mostly providing, building this incredible container for Tazadi. And now that is there, and I think we need now, all that's left for us to do is to uh, activate that container, continue with the university, continue developing spiritual leaders, continue and start start reaching out. We were just on the verge of starting to reach out have a newsletter, have more connections. And I think those are the things that are in front of us to do to keep to build this and let the building continue. Thanks. I'm laying the stick down. Hi, this is Nancy. Um picking up the stick. Uh can you hear me? Yes. Oh, I don't think you can ever tell when I'm muted or unmuted anymore. Um, I I came to Tzadi, uh along with Amy, actually, also from Roselight in Gowden. And um, I, that through the last few years, actually more than a few, I have um, – Amy and I discussed what um, my contribution – could be, and I know that I did some of the, um, facilitated some of the, of the monthly calls, but I also asked that since I had a fairly full plate in the rest of my life, if I could contribute by holding energetic space for Tati, which, uh, Amy said yes and, um, invited me to do that. And I think that um, so that's been a very great experience for me over the years, and I feel that um, that it's interesting. For me, it has had a, a big connection to spirit, perhaps through that process, but in holding space through the years, I have felt a connection to its genealogy and its ancestry, even though I didn't know the former residing bishops. So I have always felt a kind of fullness around that, not through specifics, but simply through the energy. And uh, when Amy told me that she was resigning, I actually felt um, and talked about it being a death of sorts, and just like with Gowden. It was interesting for me because I didn't feel a sense of death. Um, and I felt I didn't actually feel a sense of collapse in Saudi either. So the transition felt a little more organic to me, even though I can't explain why and maybe it doesn't even matter. It's just what I was feeling. So that I feel, um, you know, that this is alive and organic and um you know, not just that it has a future, but that it has a present right now on many different levels. I think for me, what um, was crystallized, which I wasn't completely aware of, or at least not involved in that much, were the areas of disarray that Amy, well, I mean, disarray might be the wrong word, but the parts of study that weren't as developed as um, as she had hoped would be, and, you know, with all that she did, which was a myriad of things, and, of course, Papso, you were involved in that as co-bishop also, that um, that those areas needed to be shored up so that the membership increased, so that the participation on both material and spiritual level would increase. So, you know, I'm interested in seeing and participating in my own way 
you know, to help that to, to flourish and would actually at some time, tonight doesn't seem like the night to be, I'd be interested in hearing what you, Tapsell, and you, Diane, are thinking along the lines of those areas that Amy mentioned, you know, and if there are any ideas about that that are floating around, how to shore those things up. Thank you. I'm putting down the stick. So um, I'm going to jump in here, and um, the the second the second thing is you know it's related to the first, and you know some of the sharing has already touched on the second area, um, and uh, uh, and some of the sharing that happens now will certainly touch on the first area too. But the but sort of the question you know like what what does Saudi provide to me, and what can I provide to Saudi? Um, we, we also wanted to like specifically ask both of those questions and have a little sharing on that. Um, um, I, you know, like I agree with, um, you know, a couple people have said, you know, Saudi, there's professional support, you know, like being ordained, let me touch people with healing intent. Um, it gives you know there's there's a legal thing you know that that ministers are allowed to touch people with healing intent and as a, beyond that you need to be a doctor or a, you know dentist or chiropractor um, in a lot of places. Massage therapy is getting more recognized, but I'm I'm not a massage therapist either. Um, you know so so it provide and it, you know and it's provided me with a, a place to to contribute you know a place to bring my radiance to bring my listening um, and I think it will continue to provide that I think what what I can offer um, and this will speak to uh, what you said a little bit or what you asked about Nancy um, I, I think you know there's some there's some way I, I've been there's this work that I've been doing that's like training and in, in development, like how development moves and, and there's a lot in there about listening and about communication. And um, and so I, I really liked how you frame things in terms of development, less developed, you know, more developed. Um, I think that there, you know, there's the next development to occur and it seems like that's building something within the body that is more um, magnetic, you know, that's showing up on the earth plane you know, in how we relate to each other and what programs we offer and what's happening. Um, I, I kind of want to, um, if there's interest, I want to start having um, kinds of calls where um, that, that aren't so, I, I like these spirit gathering calls, but I want to have calls that are, are circles where we're talking about who we are as a church, where we're talking about uh, you know, like our uh, the re our real lives and the development of the church and our development as clergy uh, and all that kind of thing. Um, and I, I would like to have more sort of peer to peer, like stuff being generated amongst the clergy. Um, and um, and so I think I'm going to start making proposals and inviting people to participate in that. Um, Sue, you talked about the the seminary stuff that that. Um, that Amy and I worked on. Well, actually, you know, um, I, we aren't the only ones who worked on that. Um, other people who were, you know, Jan was on the board for a while. Jan Nagy, who's on the call with us, um, supported us in that. And um, uh, Lorraine and, you know, Laura, there are a lot of people, you know, who've been involved in one way or another. Um, Amy really did the heavy lifting of that, and, you know, there was support from other people. I would love to see a way for that to get expression, you know, and to be a way for people to come in um, to to the church. You know, um, I don't think I can do that alone. I think we as a church need to discern the right way to do that. Um, you know, so I think that, yeah, you know, again, taking up lots of air time, um, I – but I did want to share some of those ideas and open it up to other people, you know, with these questions of what does the church provide to me and what can I provide to the church?
Hey, Topsoil, it's Amy. I'll pick up the stick. Great. <clears throat> so I stepped down as residing bishop, but I want to be a helpful person, and I'm still a Tzadi clergy person. And I love what you said about the phone calls. I think that sounds really good. I think what I can provide for Tazadi is to continue to work behind the scenes to build structure. I'm working right now with my husband, Peter, to build office infrastructure for the church, uh, a new database, because the one we've been working in is old and broken, and this new database will help Topsoil, Diane, and future leaders to run the church efficiently, keep track of organization and information, and be able to serve up on the web so that we can get some support, administrative support for the office, and Topsoil hopefully doesn't have to do all the stuff that I did for seven years by himself, but we can get some, some teams built if we have the right kind of equipment, which is software in today's world. Um, I'll continue to transmit to Tazadi. I um, I love this little church, and I get a sense of happiness from it. It gives me a sense of happiness that somebody wrote down the 21 principles um, and that they are stated so clearly uh, that they really work for me, and they seem like a really good operating system for a perspective on being here on Earth. I'm putting down the stick. So we have a few minutes left, and there, yeah, there are quite a few, few people, a few people who we haven't heard from at all in terms of sharing. I'd love to hear your voice. This is Gwen. Um, I'd say that um, in my role as hospice chaplain, I had. Uh, years ago something come up with a patient and I turned to to Amy to the church uh, for support that informed me as to what I could and couldn't do and uh, also supported me in, in what was a, a challenging uh, time and uh, I appreciated very much that particular practical information but also the support that I felt um, you know, the sense of community. We're not, at least I have not been very connected throughout uh, these years, but I I know some of the people, I know some of you, and that gives me a sense that there's community there, there's support and there's friendship, and that means something. Even when there is the, the separation and there's no direct contact, that, that still means something to me. Uh, so those are the things that have in the past been of benefit. As, as to where uh, I might contribute in the future, that in, in some way will be shaped by what is decided, where we go, what our direction is, and how we how we function. Um, I think I'm connecting now out of a wish to become more involved in some way. So uh, that remains to be seen how I can best serve. Thank you. That's all I have.
So is there anybody else who's wanting to share? Um, I really appreciate everybody sharing. Um, I'm drawn to say one more thing, which is about shared leadership. Like I think, I think some of the turbulence that has happened in Saudi has been because there's too much concentration of power with the bishop. And I think in order for, I think, you know, Amy addressed this some um, in last month's uh, call, you know, when she was talking about stepping down. Like, the more that we can build structures that um, that share the power, you know, so that so that I as bishop am responding to what the church wants and what the church, with the live in the church, rather than trying to necessarily figure that out on my own, you know, like I think the more people are stepping up to lead various projects and lead conversations, I think the more the more powerful we will be, uh, and that's really what I want to foster. Um, and uh, you know, that's that's why you know, like uh, I was working with Diane and asking these calls and having this time for sharing is to start setting that space for us to know who we are and to know what's valuable to us and to hear the call of. Uh, what is um, coming next? So, um, so you know, thank you guys for for being here, and thanks for sharing, and and um, and I'll put down the stick. I'd like to pick up the stick one more time, just to make a final final plea, as we're calling on ourselves to, in our meditation, to connect with the etheric organization, that entity, that consciousness, and uh, also some guidance from spirit, but also from that consciousness. Um, as I said, I from working, and I'm not saying this is the absolute truth, but just working with Bishop Amy, the founding bishop, there is something out there that's a live entity, and that goes, it isn't just a little church, it's, it's this big organization, and it has something to say. There is a consciousness involved with it. I'll just make one more effort to um, say please include that um, before big decisions are made. Thank you. I would like to pick up the stick. This is Jan Nagy. Um, the, uh, just the person that spoke before me about the etheric body of the church, it's a psychonoetic thought form, and it's, it's like sweats. It's, once people pray together or, or communicate like we're doing tonight, it creates, it has created and will continue to create that energetic etheric system. It's very big, she's right, and it's very powerful. And I'm putting down the stick. Yeah. Great. Great. Well, I, I think with time, um, Diana, are you going to lead the closing of the circle? Yes. Um, I would like to invite everyone, if you feel drawn, to do a one word check out and that means just one word about um, your experience this evening or how you're feeling in this moment. I'll go my word enriched. This is Laura Morningstar and I feel very content. This is Jan. I feel quiet. 
This is Sally. I feel blessed. This is Peggy. I feel grateful. This is Yin. I feel grateful too. Thank you. This is Amy. I feel happy. This is Nancy. I feel expanded. This is Gwen. I feel connected. This is Diane. I feel enriched. Is there anyone else? Three more people. If they're still on the call. Uh, This is Sue. Um... Thoughtful. Joanna, Michelle, would would there is it, uh, would you guys want to check out? do then is we'll close this circle. Topsoil invited us to connect into the center of the circle from our hearts to the center. I invite you to take that connection back from the center of this circle that we've shared this evening. Come back into yourself. and spending a moment in the heart energy, thanking and honoring all that has been shared and ways in which you've been touched and received touching this evening. And thanking and honoring the guides consciousness, the energy that we are, that Tazadi is, and that we are all becoming. Together, Thank you for joining this evening, and may many blessings be upon you. So this call will be maybe archived um, at Saudi.org, and for the next month, well, for the next three weeks, it'll be available um, at uh, the playback number 712-432-1085 with the access code 990322-POUND. The next spirit gathering call is on Tuesday, September 15th, uh, next month at 5.30 Pacific, 8.30 Eastern. Uh, I want to thank um, Amy uh, Skeezes for holding space live on the call and Taylor Collin, Jeff Shaw, for holding space um, uh, long distance um, from the beach. Um, And um, these calls are hosted by Chadi, an interspiritual metaphysical organization founded in California in 1964. 
God who welcomes, nurtures, and supports people in celebrating and more directly experiencing their relationship with the loving presence of the divine. Our programs are open to people of any race, color, or na uh, national or ethnic origin. Uh, visit www.tvadi.org to learn more. And um, we'll close with uh, thanks. Uh, thanks to the founding, the Saudi founders, Amy Keys and Dorothy Blackmere, uh, and to all of those who have been part of the community tonight and who listened to this call, and really thanks to all those who have and will be part of the community as a whole. And thanks to the divine who support us, the divine which supports us always, even when we're not aware of it. And, uh, Diane, would you like to lead the final blessing? Thank you again for your participation and the energy exchange this evening. May it serve to support you as you travel on your path into greater love, light, and flow. Thank you. And good night. Peace be with you. Peace. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night.